So, so welcome all, welcome all. Um, this is uh, another of Karingai Council's uh, digital or um, remote uh, webinars. Um, we welcome you. Uh, it's a particularly interesting time at the moment with, with COVID seeming to be raising its ugly head again. Um, so yes, uh, it's, a, it's a good time to start planning, um, particularly from home by, by the looks of things. So uh, I'll be recording the session today and I will be sharing the slides after this session. Um, now Bob Singh, who is a uh, marketing digital marketing specialist um, as it says on the screen there, his organization deal with websites, SEO, paid advertising, content marketing, and marketing, marketing strategy. Now, what Bob's going to talk about today is a range of matters, the things that you need to be knowing about at the moment, particularly with the changes of where, how people have been using digital marketing in the last 12 months, and also the new technology which is out there. So I won't hang around anymore. I'll hand you over to Bob, and Bob will go through everything. Just a quick note, if you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A box. General observations or, or comments, please put them in the chat. And then I will be sharing that with Bob and everybody else as well. So over to you, Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will. And hello, everyone. Uh, wonderful to be here. And thank you for joining. So th this is an hour Zoom webinar. And to talk about digital marketing in like literally an hour, it's just like, yeah, it's unpacking a box that just keeps unpacking itself. So I'm going to try to cover up in as much as I think is going to be worthy and, and worthwhile and valuable for, for, um, for, all of you, for all of you folks. First thing out of the box, this is, there's nothing like, like the new what, right? And I, and I really want to make this clear. It's not like, oh my God, this is the new what I need to do. The what hasn't changed. What you need to do has not changed whether it's last year, the year before, today, like this year, and even going forward, what has changed is the how, how you do it and how you put that into play uh, with the existing uh, tools, platforms, uh, systems that are currently out there. So that's, I think, hopefully will come across in terms of, you know, what we're trying, what is not the what, it's the how we do this. So if I look at, Okay, our objective today is to really understand like what is that landscape of digital marketing today and what is it and what does it look like? And, and again, you know, what is the how? So this is, this is something that I really do talk to a lot of people about. And so a lot of, a lot of uh, businesses, they start a website, they get it out there, they, they, they upload it, it's, it's published, it's running. And then it's like, well, okay, I'm done. Now there should be people coming to my door. There is a second part of the equation, and that second part of the equation is digital marketing, right? And to me, if you, if you don't do that, if you don't put some effort into your online presence, then your website is exactly what this slide is showing. It's a billboard in a desert. So it might be the most amazing website, the most fantastic, uh, informative website. But if nobody knows about it, then you may as well just put it out in the desert and it's going to stay there, right? So hopefully what we're trying to do here is to work our way back and say, well, how do we get this out of the desert? And how do we get it on the, on the highway and in the freeways and you know, other people to see, most people to see what you're doing. So let me just start here, okay? So now I'm not expecting you to read this, uh, the, the, this slide. If you were to Google chiropractor near me, okay? This is what Google's search engine will display to you. So there is a lot of information that's coming into your face and, and a lot of people right now. And so not too, you know, it, literally like five, six years ago, you would not have seen this level of information on a Google search page. And by the way, I am going to talk Google uh, all the way through this. And the simple reason is this, that Google has about like 90% plus market share of the search engine business. And just for your information, there's Google at like 90%. And then there's probably Bing at about like 5%, I think it is. And then comes Yahoo, then Baidu, and then DuckDuckGo, and then all the other uh, smaller search engines. But Google is the major dominant player when it comes to search. And everyone just, you know, talks Google. So forgive me if I use Google as the vernacular for search engine, if you don't like Google, that is. So, but this is what Google will display for you if you were to type in uh, chiropractor near me and you go, wow, that's a lot of information, okay? So first of all, let's break this down. Let's unpack this. So the top and the bottom are 
ads, okay? This is paid ads. This is pay-per-click advertising that Google displays for people who are willing to pay, pay for you know, their, their business to be shown up there. Now, here's the kicker. If you're in the top four, uh, what they call positions one, two, three, and four at the top of the page, fantastic for your ad, well done. Imagine if you're on the bottom, there are ads here, by the way. These are ads at the bottom here as well. Imagine you're at the bottom of the page, okay? So you'd be like, wow, that didn't work really well for me because who's going to scroll this far down? You know, there's the old saying, it's an old joke, right? That says that if you want to hide a dead body, you hide it on page two of Google because nobody goes there. And it's almost like scrolling down the page of, a, of, this, of page one on Google to see what else is down there. And it, it's only the, you know, the sort of those who are really interested that may do it. But if your ad showed up here, um, you know what? It's gonna be a real tough slog for you, okay? But that's number one, okay? Ads, that's what we see at the top of the page. Okay, number two is this section here. This is your Google My Business listing, okay? So now if, if for those businesses out there that don't have or claim their Google My Business listing, please do so, it's free. Like Google does it for free and it allows you to show up. Look at this position just under the ads. Okay. So chiropractor near me, and then you've got all these chiros that start showing up who are in there, who have a Google My Business listing. And there's then a chance, and this is organic. Now we're talking organic here. Uh, there is a chance that somebody might want to click through to you from this position over here. So that's a very coveted spot. So this is free. And this is something that you should be doing. And it's amazing how many businesses who aren't doing this and haven't optimized their Google My Business listing, which I'll talk more about later on. Then we have this section here, and this is called People Also Ask, okay, or PAA. And this little tab is, uh, it's actually related searches, right? So if I type in chiropractor near me, in this case, Google has said to me, people are also searching for these terms on in the search engine so what does this mean for you it means that if you can start to look at these questions and look to see if i can also answer some of these questions within your content of your website then there is a chance i'm not saying it's a given there is a chance that you may show up in the people also ask section of that of that uh snippet in, the, in this area all right and again i'll touch more upon this later i'm right now i'm just unpacking what um what what a what a typical page looks like on google right so we'll talk more about this in a second then we come to organic listings okay so now anyone who feels that you know what i've built a website i've got it now posted uh, online and it's there and i should be showing up on organic you have to compete with this much real estate on google before you even start showing in the organic listings and even then, look who comes up under chiropractor. It's all those really big names who have spent a lot of money on, search, on, on, on SEO, search engine optimization, and they're now then starting to show up in this particular area, right? So that's, that's what's happening on a Google page right now. And that's how competitive it is when, you, when you're looking at a Google, my business, uh, a Google um, search engine page, regardless of the search term that you're looking for. Now, it starts getting even more challenging. And I'm, this is not meant to be a, a downer or a real, this is so impossible. I'm just, again, wanting to show you what's going on and how we can work around this and to make it work for you. Featured snippet, you will see this. If I change my search term from chiropractor near me to what does a chiropractor do, then all of a sudden, and you, and you know, everyone on, on, online here would have seen this at some stage on Google. And this is, an instantaneous answer to your question. What does a chiropractor do? There's the answer, right? Boom, boom, boom. Now, if you're Health Direct, fantastic, right? It's a government organization. They know they've got fantastic content. So they've obviously delivered on Google's expectations and they show up as, as a featured snippet. This is a two-edged sword, okay? Both for these guys and everyone else. So now I see this, I go, oh, I know what a chiropractor does, all right? Fantastic, and I've got my answer. And maybe 50, 60, 70% of the people will bounce off Google now and say, I've got my answer, I'm done. The other 30 or whatever the percentage is, 
may decide to click on this link because they figure if Google is showing them up here, then it really must be relevant and good information. So they click on here and off they go to healthdirect.gov.au. What does that mean for everyone else? Nobody else gets to see like what else is below in that organic listings, okay? So this is featured snippets which are really, really helpful for us as the end user, as the user or, or, the, or the visitor. For a business though, it can be a, a crippling effect, uh, particularly if you are not health direct and if you're an, another chiropractor in, in, in the area and you're further down in the organic listings, then you may not ever be seen, all right? So that, that's, that's another thing to keep in mind. And I want you to please keep this slide uh, in mind for now, because I'm going to refer back to it uh, later on uh, in, in, in this presentation. Okay, so this is an important slide, and I'm going to give you an insight as to how you may possibly even feature in what they call feature snippet. You cannot influence this. Google chooses us. You cannot influence Google. There's nothing you can do to Google or the search to, for them to show you. It's all to do with your content. So we'll talk more about that in a, in a, in a second. Okay. Let's keep going. Then on the right-hand side of a Google page, you'll see knowledge graphs and knowledge panels. All right? And these tend to show up for more so for brands. Like if you were to type in Nike or Apple, Samsung, you know, uh, Ford, Mercedes-Benz, you'll see a knowledge panel that shows up here on the right-hand side of, of the search. Or if you're searching for a, a, a term or, or a concept like search engine optimization or marketing, or you know whatever it may be, uh, it's it, it it'll show up here. But then what happens? This knowledge panel is pretty much more so uh, than not dominated by Wikipedia, and the Wikipedia is going to take that number one spot because Google knows that Wikipedia has a lot of free information. It's constantly updated, so it's going to show that information. So that's fine. That 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 search panel. These two areas. Are very, but you'll also, you may have also seen these. And these are related keywords and long tail keywords. And I want to just talk about this for a second. So, if you were a, and I'm using chiropractor as an example because that's, that's, that's what we're talking about here. The, the term chiropractor is a very, very um, competitive term if you're going for it, it, both in terms of AdWords or search engine optimization. Again, we'll talk more about that in the section so, uh, so in, 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 a, in a moment. So chiropractor on its own is a very, very tough term to go for. However, if you could go for what will be the Google calls related keywords or people also searched for, if you started targeting some of these areas and you can see there's a lot more, you know, there's may, maybe some more pages uh, in here. If there's some more uh, related keywords you can start targeting, you can maybe bring that into your content because people are searching for these related keywords. So bring that into your content on your website, or whether it's your blog, or whether it's um, any in a homepage content that you may then trigger for these type of searches as well. That even better, again, are what we call long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are not just singular keywords. It's not like chiropractor, right? In this case, it's, you know, I don't know, uh, there's something like chiropractor full body adjustment, right? There might be one here on, there's something here on, on pregnancy, chiropractor, uh, and pregnancy dog chiropractor, right? Uh, you know, so if, if you start uh, targeting what they call long tail keywords, then you, you have a better chance for your online presence or your content or your website to trigger for that rather than just a single word chiropractor because healthdirect.gov.au have got that taken up already. They've, they've, they've spent a lot of money on that. But if you're a smaller chiropractor just starting up, you may want to start looking at long tail keywords to um, start targeting within your content, within your blogs and whatnot. So the point I'm making here is that Google does give you a lot of information on their, on their search engine page that allows businesses to fine tune their online presence. And, and, and maybe the, the audience we have on uh, today already know about this. And if they do, fantastic. And I'm just reinforcing it. If you don't, and this is all sort of new to you, then really spend some time looking at your industry, what you're doing, type those key, those key uh, your industry keywords into the search bar and see what else is coming up. And you might pick up on some things that might be of relevance for you. 
So this is this is an area that is really really um, sort of you know, powerful uh, to fine tune your your online presence. Well, I just wanted to ask you a question. If if you if there are questions coming in, would, would, are we taking them towards the end, or are we taking them uh, as we go along? Uh, I'm, there's, there's nothing coming in yet, but what I'll do is if anybody has any questions, um, please put them in the Q&A box and uh, one's just come in right now. Um, so from Margaret, how to incorporate the keywords in a website just in any spot or on the landing page? Yeah, it's a very good question. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Margaret, I'm going to say, Margaret, can you hold, hold that thought? I will come to that. Uh, we we actually talk about that in a in a in a in a second. So that that's a, a fantastic question. Great. So okay. we'll come back to that. Awesome. Yep. Wonderful. Okay. So so here's all this amazing resources that you have available at your fingertips. It's all free. It's in Google, and what better resource than Google? Because like you know, when I say ninety three percent or ninety five percent or whatever the number is of searches go through Google anyway, uh, you're going to be able to see it here. Okay. Now. Let's now come back to the, the one layer deep again. Okay, in the, in the world of, and by the way, this is not just Google, this is any search engine. And if, by the way, just, just to give you an idea, search engine, uh, what are the search engines? There's Google at like 90% plus market share. Then you've got Bing, uh, which is uh, the Microsoft, pro, Microsoft um, search engine, which is, I don't know, maybe about five-ish percent. Then you've got Yahoo, then you've got Baidu, and then you've got DuckDuckGo, and then it just diminishes down to you know, nothing. So, but regardless of what search engine you're talking to, there are really three types of searches that go on, okay? The first one is what we call informational search. Informational search is all about questions, all right? Please keep that in mind as we go down the track in this presentation. I am gonna come back to this. Question, informational search typically start with who, what, when, where, why, how, you know, how to guide, tutorial. So this is where YouTube have their highest flow through of search, right? It is how to, what to, when to, right? That's why uh, YouTube, which is owned by Google, is such a powerful uh, resource for anything. The DIYs of this world, you know, I wanna build a computer, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. So the informational search, <clears throat> and how to the question related search is extraordinarily powerful. Navigational search is about going directly to the brand. Okay, so you literally type in Apple, Samsung, Nike, you know, Adidas, you know, Ford, whatever it is, or even your brand name. Okay, your brand name, your company name. That's a direct navigate. That's a navigational search, and it'll just you know pop up and show. And by the way, if you're a business. It doesn't matter how big you are. And if your business, your uh, abc.com.au does not trigger at number one position for that particular search term, that navigational, this navigational search term, then there is something really wrong with your website structure, right? You should always trigger at position one for the exact words for your brand. Then the final is transactional. Transactional is all about e-commerce. You want to buy a book, you want to buy, you want to purchase an iPhone, you want to, you know, you want to buy um, the next Surface Pro from Microsoft, whatever it is, okay? So that's a very a transactional um, type area. So these are these, buy, coupon, order, purchase, price, cheap. So the cheapest iPhone, cheapest phone, cheapest laptop, cheapest whatever. So when you come down to looking at how do I create content, informational content, which is really directed to like question related stuff, ideally a blog post and website content. Okay. Now I'm going to back to uh, back to Margaret's uh, point, and I will answer it in more detail. So this could be on your home page. So where you've got on your home page an introduction about your business and what you do, you might put your relevant key phrases, long tail keywords, and answer questions in that area of your web page. Or you might uh, write a blog post. If you're an accountant, right? What are the top three frustrations with accountants, right? You might write a blog post about that. So you write it all out and it's detailed, it's, it's comprehensive. And then guess what? Somebody is typing in frustrated with my accountant. So it's picking up on those key phrases, which you have written a blog post over uh, uh, for, and bang, it's, it, it potentially, I'm not saying guaranteed, potentially Google picks it up and saying, oh, that's a relevant content. I'm going to bring that across and put that on page one and show people here are the top three frustrations with accountants. 
and you stop Bob, in the blog Bob, post. Yes. Quick question, Bob, from Kerry. Um, is she asked, or he or she asked, how do you see the long tail keywords? There's the first one. And the second question, could you tell me how I find the search engine results page? So there's two okay. questions there. Okay, okay. Uh, let me just answer the second. The search engine results page is what, if you go to Google, you fire up Google in the address bar, You whatever you type in and whatever then shows up is called the search engine results page. That is the results page. So if I were to type in electrician near me, chiropractor near me, or best accountant, uh, you know, um, how to set up a uh, self-managed super fund, throwing things out here. You type that into the search bar and then whatever comes up on the next screen is your search engine results page. That is it, that's what you're seeing, okay? In respect to the, the first question is, what do I see? Typically it's gonna show up when you're typing in what, what, and again, this is because it's only one hour long. I'm trying to keep this quite simple. Like chiropractor is called a head term uh, keyword. Again, okay? it's a single keyword. So whenever you type in a single or a couple of keywords, electrician, um, commercial electrician, domestic electrician, commercial plumber, blah, 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 then it'll, it'll come up with results. And then on the right-hand side of all that guff that we saw before, on the right-hand side, you'll see long tail keywords, uh, like a panel and two panels, related keywords and long tail keywords. Nice. And, and my suggestion is give it a go. And if you're still not seeing it, I'm more, just email me and, I, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll show you that, uh, right. uh, how it's done. Right. And just okay. a reminder, everyone, that these slides will be shared and also Bob's contact details after the yeah, session. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, so, so we've got informational, navigational and transactional. So that you, please keep that in mind for a second because these come into play when we go to the talk on SEO. In the world of digital marketing, there are two big umbrellas, all right? Despite what anyone else will tell you, and it, there are two big umbrellas. You either pay to be shown at the top. Remember, just go back to our um, search engine page anatomy, right at the top with uh, paid ads. So you either pay, so that's Google ads, okay? or you're at, uh, at the next level um, uh, below that, which is organic. Organic meaning you, you are found because Google found you to be relevant. And that's search engine optimization, SEO. Okay, so there's PPC and SEO. They're the two big umbrella categories when it comes to digital marketing. So let's just unpack each of these. Let's talk about AdWords as a start. You may or may not know how AdWords work. The first thing I, I always, when I see a client about AdWords, they go, it's a load of crap. It doesn't work. I tried it. I spent a lot of money and it, it, it doesn't work. And, and, and it, you know, I spent, yeah, it just doesn't work. And the reason why it didn't, didn't work was because it was, not, it was not done properly. And there were a lot of things that were missed along the way. So let's, let's just, okay. So what was missed? Okay, let, let's, let's just break this down. How do AdWords work? In Google, I type in, let's go back to my chiropractor example. In Google, I type in chiropractor near me. Okay, so there we go. And, and I type that in. Then, all, then in Google's list of ads, there are a number of advertisers. Like in this case, let's say four chiropractors, chiropractor A, B, C, and D, all right? And these chiropractors are all bidding to show up on Google, on Google's uh, ad at the, at the top. So now what happens is that Google then says, okay, there are four people who are bidding for the word chiropractor in, in, in the, in, 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 for the business. So Google says, okay, now what do I do? Who do I show to? Then the next stage is called the auction, right? And the auction is that all four uh, bidders, all four um, uh, chiropractors go into a bid auction. It's literally a bid auction. And Google then says, okay, now I'm gonna look at things like the quality score, I'll talk about that, the bid format, expected extensions, the bid price, and a number of different things, okay? And then out of that auction, Google then says, okay, chiropractor A and chiropractor D didn't make the cut, but chiropractor B and C made the cut. And based on my analysis and the algorithm, I'm going to show in the ad results, chiropractor B and chiropractor C. This happens in a split second. And you know that because when you type in chiropractor near me, bang, results come up on the, on the search page immediately and the ads are shown at the top. But these two people, 
missed, uh, were culled, and you've got these two who made the cut. Then you got to say, well, wow, okay, they made the cut. How come these two didn't make the cut, right? And this is the problem that we have when people are saying, I do AdWords myself, and you know, I've been doing it. I've, gosh, I've spent a lot of money on it already, and I've seen no result. In fact, I can't even find my ads; they're not showing up. And this is all to do in the auction and what's going on in the auction. All right. So this is how Google Ads work. You type in a keyword. The keyword is associated uh, with an advertiser. The advertiser are shortlisted. The advertiser go into an auction. There's a really complex algorithm that Google then goes through to say, "I'm going to show." these people. That's why you show up in those positions. Now, unfortunately, um, some, some businesses, uh, regardless of how good they are, end up showing right down the bottom of that, remember that bottom of the page? That Remember the first page we, sh we saw? Right at the bottom, those four positions at the bottom of the search engine results page. Honestly, what a wasted shot that is, because who's honest, how many people actually scroll all the way down? Maybe you do, okay? But most people don't scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page to find what they're looking for. They're either going to type, click on the ads at the top. They're either going to click on the Google My Business listing, or they're either going to click on the first maybe two, three, four, or five organic listings. And that's where they go. But that's how Google Ads uh, work. So I'm just going to, we spoke about, Google, sorry, I'll, I'll stay with on this slide. We spoke about the Google quality score. Okay. And this is, this is that secret ingredient in Google Ads, and a lot of people don't quite understand. The Google quality score is a ranking from one to 10. And it determines whether A, you are, you're actually gonna show up uh, as a, as a, on, on the search page, as, uh, on the ad. And if you do show up, it's gonna determine what position you're gonna show up, either position one, two, three, or four, okay? And that's, that's the Google quality score. And that's what that's doing. Now, the Google quality score, and I have to apologize um, in advance. <laughs> I'm at home. And if you can hear my dog barking, it's because somebody's at the front. So apologies for that um, happening. Um, the Google quality score is then determined by a number of factors. And these are the typical factors that determine the quality score of your ad. Okay, so this is the second part of that how. So I'm not telling you anything new in terms of, yeah, there's something called Google ads, but I'm now I'm hoping to impart to you how do they work and how can you make it work for, your, for you and your business if you choose to do it. So the first things it looks for is ad and keyword relevancy. And why is that important? There was a time, for example, when uh, supplements, okay, uh, supplements are an area that are really touchy in Google's world. And, and it tends not to show ads for supplements because of all, you know, the steroids and all the wrong reasons. And so what a lot of supplement companies did was that they chose keywords that they thought that, you know, people are, for example, holistic health, right? Uh, Reiki healing or, you know, uh, uh, massage therapy or remedial massage. And they would tag those keywords with their business in supplemental uh, 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 health supplements or supplements. And so when somebody typed in um, uh, uh, holistic health, for example, uh, then that particular supplement company would then show up. And then Google picked up on that and said, well, hang on a second. You know, this is actually totally wrong. The person wasn't looking for a supplement company. They were looking for a holistic health company, you know, whatever treatment they were looking for. So then all of a sudden, ad relevancy and keyword relevancy came into it. So Google very quickly says, not, not relevant. And you're, you're, you've missed the cut. You're gone. Okay. Then it looks at things like the click-through rate and the landing page relevancy. And this, this happens Please believe me, this happens in split second um, timing. It looks to see, okay, somebody typed in holistic health, like oh, chiropractor, let's go back to chiropractor. And then it says, okay, now does this particular business, do they talk about what a chiropractor does? Do they talk about their services? Because Google already has all these landing pages in their servers. They don't have to go and look for the landing page. They already have it on, on board, if you like. And all they've got to do is just go bang, bang, pick it out and look at it. Then they look to see at how good the ad is, right? And how relevant is the, ad, the, um, the, the, the wording? And what is the expected click-through rate? Somebody reads that ad and are they going to click through, uh, through that ad? And this is something called schema. And I'll talk more about that uh, in, in, in a little while. 
So if they see, yep, it's got a good uh, click-through rate and people are gonna click through to it and the landing page they're gonna end up on is relevant and there is information here that I can use, then you made the cut, your quality score, it may not be 10, it might be like five or four or six, but it's good enough for it to get up there. The other thing Google looks for, right, in terms of AdWords, is a historical performance of your ad. And this is one of the things I always say to, uh, to, to, to clients, is that if you're gonna start an AdWords campaign, please be willing to give it a go for at least three months, three months. Why? Month number one is betting in period. It's all about getting the bid adjustments. It's understanding the, the algorithm, understanding your business, the algorithm, understanding what keywords you're, you're targeting, the algorithm, understanding are they broad match, uh, exact match or whatever. That's month number one. Month number two is tweaking and adjusting. And we're now you know, in it. Month number three is the first full month of a proper ad running with all the adjustments. At the end of month number three, you get to see, is this working for me or not, okay? And that's historical performance. So Google then says, okay, you've been going at this for three months and you've had adjustments and tweaks and fine tunes and you've updated and whatnot. And then it says, oh. so it starts giving you credit for the fact that you know, you're there, you've been there for three months, okay? And then all of a sudden your quality score starts inching up. So the more your quality score inches up, the better it is. So where you show up in that, let's say the top four positions of Google ads, now one, two, three, or four, will be determined by the quality score, one to 10. Here's the other interesting thing. If your quality score is very high, very high, and a good quality score, in fact, better than your competitors, and remember we had competitor uh, uh, chiropractor B and C that made the cut, and in, in, in this case, if chiropractor B had a higher quality score than chiropractor C, they will show up higher, but they will probably also pay a less cost per click. Let me explain that. Car, the word chiropractor or the, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the phrase chiropractor, keyword chiropractor, let's say it um, has a market value of five bucks, $5. So that means every time anyone clicks on your ad, that's $5 gone out of your budget. Okay, but that's how much that chiropractor keyword is, is contributing. But if your quality score is high compared to your competitor, okay, then your, your actual cost per click, the cost of that keyword, maybe $4.50, maybe $4.70, maybe $4.20. I don't know what the number is, but it'll be, it'll be less than $5. And so all of a sudden, now you're starting to limit or reduce the amount of money that you're paying for your cost for that particular ad. I know this is getting a little bit complicated. It's a little bit sort of, um, uh, sort of, you know, out there, but I'm just, this is, when I go back to again, the how to understand the how all this works, if you can understand this, if you want to put some time and effort into this, or you go talk to somebody else, a professional to help you, you can then optimize your performance. And this is how Google ads work. And this is where people say it doesn't work for me. It was a, a lot of crap, spent a lot of money, uh, got nothing out of it. And they, got nothing out of it because A, it, they didn't quite comply with all of this stuff and B, they were paying lots of money because this number here was very low. And if well, those of you who understand how equations work, um, if the denominator of an, of an equation is a low number, this is a high number. If the don denominator, this is denominant numerator, if the denominator is a high number, that's a very low number. So that's how Google works it out, okay? So there are pros and cons. Nothing is ever like, okay, uh, or, or hunky-dory. Okay, Google uh, uh, AdWords, definitely quick results. You get shown up there, page one, top four positions. If you get it right and off you go, and if somebody clicks through your, to your website, you can get business. Brand awareness, if you're a new website or you're a new business and you're just launching, if you're prepared to spend some money into this, then yes, there you are. People get to see you and, 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 and know about you and off you go. Reconnect with previous, yeah, that's all about retargeting. I think this is a very important one. You can send people to specific pages on your website. So when you have an ad on Google uh, AdWords, the page that you want to send people to can be very specific. You're going to say, I want to send them not just to the home page, but it could be a particular services page. It could be a particular product page. It could be a particular you know, video page or, uh, uh, that you want to send them to. 
but you can be very targeted as to where they go to your website as opposed to just the pre, you know the home page, which is just very generic. And this one is very important. You can measure uh, a return on investment. Why? Because you know how much you're spending on Google Ads. Now, the way Google Ads also works is that you set a daily budget. And you might say, okay, I'm not prepared to spend any more than $20 a day. So if your if your uh, chiropractic keyword is costing $5 a click, then you've got four clicks, basically. You bought four clicks, right? Five times four is $20. As soon as four clicks have gone through to your website, that on that day, Google stops showing your ads, right? Then it resets the next day and you can start again at $20. And so you, you'll never exceed the budget, that, the daily budget that you've sent. So now you know that I've spent this much money in a month. And if people came to my website and they converted, they, they got business uh, out of the website, they got business for me, then you can say, what's the cost? How much did I make out of that business? Then you can start saying, hang on a second, I actually got, I got good sales and I paid this much for the ad. This is working for me. I can keep going. I should keep going. So that's the return on investment, right? So you can actually, it's very quantifiable. And I think that's a very important point. On the downside, yep, hopefully you've seen it does require a bit of work and expertise. It can be very competitive because people are spending. Why? You've got brands that are spending upwards of $1,000 to $2,000 to $10,000 a day, a day on Google Ads. And so if you're trying to compete with a big brand or a, a, a larger brand, then yep, it can be very, very, very costly. Google policies. Google may reject your ad. Right? And sometimes you have no idea why they're rejecting my ad, but it just didn't comply with their guidelines. Okay? And then, like I said, and you, you probably would have seen that the ad positions uh, depend on a number of variables. Right? We saw all that before. And so to understand those can be quite a, um, quite a challenging thing. So, um, Will, before we go on to the next section, uh, are there any questions? A couple of questions. Um, one sec. Uh, so Margaret's asked two questions. The first one she asked about uh, 10 minutes ago about, she said, are, are tags the same as keywords? Um, and then the next question from Margaret, I believe Facebook and Instagram are now used as search engines, particularly with younger audiences. Could we have a webinar on these media, not just Google? That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know what, social media is just another world in itself. And, and I'll just touch upon that later on, uh, in, like very quickly to so, say, so yes, we can do that. We you can have a session on, on socials tags and keywords. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's a technical differentiation. T tags are like, think about a blog. And if you're writing a blog and I'm, I'm and I'm a car, I'll get back to the chiropractor and I'm a chiropractor and I'm writing on back. Uh, health, or I'm running on spinal, or I'm running on, um, uh, you know, hunched back, um, whatever. There might be tags that I put a blog to, and then so people can then find a blog that's relating to that particular symptom or that area. Keywords tend to be related to a topic. So, you know, so chiropractor, the head term keyword. So below that could be back adjustment, and below that could be, you know, spinal adjustment, and below could be, you know, uh, uh, neck adjustments right so that, that they tend to be keywords related to chiropractic hopefully that makes sense but keywords and tags while they sort of sound they can be similar they're not they're used in different contexts and in the world of in the world of seo or even um google adwords keywords are are used differently and are very are very specific in terms of how they're used Great. And just that, and that question, with regard to Facebook, Instagram, we regularly do um, workshops on these things, Margaret. Um, I, I just actually saw something come across my uh, social media today. There's a, there's a good one going on tonight. I think uh, Hornsby Chamber are running with a great Facebook specialist, Heather Porter. So it might be worth having a look at that because uh, she's- I, 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 think, I think they've postponed that one because of the restrictions. Oh, they yeah, they have. Oh, okay. think, but okay. they are rescheduling that one. Fair yeah. enough. But that's something okay. to look out for. Yep. Anyway, back to yep. you, Bob. Cool. All right. So we talked about paid, right? How to get how to get there in terms of paid. And the next one is below all those. Um, remember them? Our, our, our search page. Now we're moving into the area of organic, 
right? And that is being found for your keywords and key phrases and, and whatnot and long tail keywords. So this is SEO, search engine optimization. I'm gonna tell you right now, Google uses, the, the, the industry is estimating it's well over 200 factors in its organic search listings algorithm, okay? Not, not everyone knows what those factors are. We've got a pretty good idea of what they are, but these things keep changing. There's 200 ranking factors. So if anyone thinks I can game Google or I can, I can second guess them at what they're doing, um, then you know what, seriously, you, you should be a gazillionaire right now because you know, you've, you've figured it out or you should own Google. The thing is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to, to rank, to outguess Google on their ranking factors, okay? But there is something you can do. In terms of SEO, we can stop the presentation right here, right now, and I will send you this slide and say, this is what you need to do to make sure your SEO works for you, okay? Then, but you'll just turn around to me and say, you cannot be serious, right? You want me to do all this, and then I have no idea what you're talking about, but this is what SEO does. This is what search engine optimization can look like for any particular client. It's not to say you just do every one of these things, and but this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more that needs to be done, but in, in search engine optimization, it's, it's something called the law of diminishing returns. Uh, there's some big ticket items that you do that, that are gonna get you some big returns very quickly. Then there's all the fine tuning stuff, which the, the gain becomes so incremental and so minuscule that the effort that you're putting in to do it is just not worth the, the benefit or the outcome that you're getting for, from it. So the, the trick to here, the trick to uh, SEO <clears throat> is understanding what's gonna get me the biggest returns as, uh, uh, you know, qu uh, as quickly as possible, right? And that's what the focus that of, um, I wanna to talk to you about today because we can go deep, but it's just absolutely convoluted <coughs> uh, if we do that. I said to you before that Google introduces um, changes to its, uh, to its search algorithm at least twice a year. There are two, at least two significant updates every year uh, to their search algorithm. And there are a lot of little ones that, 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 uh, that come along as well. The most recent one, um, which happened sort of earlier this year is something called page experience, okay? They were meant to bring this out last year in 2020, but then COVID hit. And they said, you know what? It's unfair to bring this out and, and to start expecting uh, businesses to, to, to contend with this along with everything else. So they held off on it. So they brought it out, and I think it was about May, maybe. Uh, can't, you know, can't remember now. So page experience is all about the user. And what they want to give the user, that's you and I going on a web page, to have the most flawless and seamless and fluid experience on a page without the frustrations that a lot of us have experienced on other websites, okay? So let's break this one down. So first, the first part of page experience is what they call core web vitals, all right? And this is a matter of three things, loading, interactivity, and visual stability. And remember at the beginning, I said, this is, this, hopefully this is not getting too technical, but this is the new landscape of digital marketing. And this is what you need to do, uh, like how you can fit into that. Let's keep, this is very simple actually. Loading is how quickly does your web page load? So when somebody uh, clicks on your web page or types in your URL, how quickly does your web page load? And more importantly, how quickly can I start seeing the first amount of meaningful content, whether it's text or, or an image or whatever, meaningful content on your web page, okay? The second part is interactivity. And that is how quickly can I start interacting with your website? Interacting means I can click on a button, I can click on a link, I can click on a video or a podcast or whatever. But I, how quickly can I start interacting with your web page? And the third one, which I'm sure everyone has experienced, is called visual stability. So how many times have you been on a website? You go into a website and you go, oh, that's what I want to do. And you, and you go to click on it but it's moved down and something else has come up on top of it, typically an ad or, or something else, right? And, and, and that's like, like, oh, how frustrating is that? Now I've clicked on, on an ad instead of what I wanted to click on. And that's called visual stability. So these three things work together in, in, uh, in harmony or synchronicity to make sure that you load fast, it's interactive and everything's stable on your website. And these are, these are ranking signals again for Google, for search, 
in terms of page experience, right? Then, they, of course, we know mobile friendly. Yeah, we know that safe browsing and, and all that stuff. But here's the other one that they started bringing. These are uh, interstitials, okay? No intrusive inter interstitials. Now, inter an interstitial, if you don't know what that is, uh, keeping it uh, very simply, it's the pop-up, right? So how many times have you been on a website where you're looking at it and then boom, a pop-up comes up, whether it's an ad, an opt-in form, a sign-up form, subscribe to my newsletter, you know, whatever the case may be, it pops up. Now, Google aren't saying that we don't want any of this. What they're saying is don't make it disruptive for the user. So I'll give you an example how this might work is that if let's say you end up on a website and you find an article or something, it's very interesting and you start reading it and you're there, you're scrolling through and then halfway through the article, this big thing pops up saying, hey, subscribe to my newsletter now, right? And you're like, whoa, okay. Then you're looking for the little cross to, to, to shut off that little box and you can't find the cross, right? And so that's, a, that's called an intrusive interstitial. The better way of doing it would be that you're scrolling through, you're scrolling down, you're reading, but then uh, on the side, a little pop-up happens, you know, on the side, away from the text or the, the content that says, if you'd like to subscribe, you know, you can do it here. So it's there on the side, at the bottom, uh, on the bottom bar, on the left, right-hand side or whatever, but it's not intruding into your experience. That's where these guys are coming from now, all right? So that's another level of, of um, um, sort of SEO um, uh, ranking, if you like, that, that's coming into play in terms of you know, core web vitals and page experience, okay? Now, SEO 101, there's a lot. And again, you know what? SEO on its own is another discussion. Uh, you can read these numbers, but basically what it's essentially saying is that there are a lot of people that come in and they tend to click on, on links that are not, or not paid advertising. In fact, they're saying 70 to 80% ignore the paid ad. I'm going to beg to differ, and I know these are stats, and I know these are from the internet. These are stats. I beg to differ. I don't believe it's that high. Reason being is that you, they wouldn't work otherwise. And Google's second source of revenue... Google's second source of worldwide revenue is paid advertising. So if it didn't work, then I'm not sure why they would do it. But nonetheless, uh, I'm sure it's, there are a, a big majority that don't click the ads. They go to the organic listings. But that just go, the, all these numbers just go to point that organic listings are very, very important. Uh, uh, being listed organically is very important. I said before, there are like over 200 ranking factors for Google in the search algorithm, right? They tend to break it down into some of these areas. I'm not, and again, for the, for the sake of uh, time and brevity, I don't wanna go through each one of these, but what I will focus on are these two areas here that are keywords and content, okay? So your website really has to, I'll go back again to that first slide, look at those long tail keywords that Google is giving you. It's giving you suggestions as to what other people are searching for for your particular industry, if you type that in, start incorporating those long tail keywords and, and related keywords into your content on your website. And that content, and I'm gonna back and, and hopefully answer the, the question that Margaret had before, where do you put it? You put it in those areas on like your descriptor in your homepage, you might have a services page, the about page, that you incorporate those keywords and those phrases and those search terms that people are looking for and the best way to do it, okay, the how, are blogs. Google looks always for websites and ranks websites that have refreshing content on their website. Now, how many times can you change your homepage? Or how many times can you change your About Us page? I mean, really, probably once every two years, all right? Maybe. But your blog page, blogs, you can put up a blog every, every month, every week, every day if you wanted to but it's content that's going up on your website. And as long as your content, in this case, website, uh, blogs are relevant to the search terms that people are looking for, then you have a chance of ranking organically, okay? Then there's a second part that Google looks for and that are backlinks, all right? So what Google looks for in, in terms of whether it wants to, and by the way, it's not Google, it's just every search engine, is relevance and authority. So what is relevance? Relevance is content. Is your content relevant to what the user is looking for? So if I typed in um, how to adjust, you know, ha ha how to remove tiles from a bathroom, okay? So, and then bang, up comes a website. If it's got video and there's instructional stuff on there, 
it's going to give that website uh, a, a big thumbs up. The authority is how, how many other websites out there are linking back to your website that say that, hey, this website is a really good website on how to remove uh, old tiles from a bathroom. And they link back to your website. That's called backlinks, right? And that's authority. So Google looks at these two factors to say, should I rank you up high or not even consider you? So the more relevant you are, the more authoritative you are in terms of backlinks, then the more likelihood you are that you're going to start ranking um, in, in, in search in, in, in the organic listings. Again, and nothing is ever as simple as just do this, backlinks. Everyone has backlinks. Everyone has a backlink from True, uh, what a True Local, Hot Frog, Yellow Pages, all those local business directory listings. I'm going to tell you now, Google doesn't give them that much um, a, a credence, all right? Good, every, because it's free and everyone can do it. But if you had uh, a link on how to remove tiles from your bathroom from the Bunnings website, right, for some reason, then Google would give you cred uh, a lot of uh, credibility for that, right? Because you're coming from an authoritative website. So if your backlink is coming from a website, which is considered authoritative, and this is called um, uh, domain authority, authoritative, like if you're a financial uh, website, AFR or Sydney Morning Herald or you know whatever, great, right? It's going to give you credence, uh, uh, um, a lot of credibility for that. So that's how relevance and authority works when it comes to putting people on uh, in terms of the search, uh, where they show up on, on SEO, on, on the organic listings. Okay. This is where I think I'm gonna answer some other questions. It is about answering questions. In, in Google, right, globally, there are over, this is conservative, by the way, over 5 billion searches that happen every day, every day. So this is nearly the population of the planet, right? That many searches happening every day. 14% of all searches on Google are in the form of questions. Now, 14% may not sound like a big number, but 14% of 5 billion is like 700 million. So 700 million searches every day are in the form of questions. That's global. If you want to bring that down to us, you know, uh, down under, uh, or even, you know, New South Wales, or even your local area, wherever you are, North Shore, or, you know, wherever you're calling in from, that number is probably still pretty big. So the importance of questions is extraordinarily high. And this is where, if you can start answering questions on your website, in content, in blogs, then Google will pick you up. And now, do you remember when I went back in that first slide and I showed you that section called People Also Ask? If you remember, each of those areas were questions. They were like, how, what, who, whatever. If you can start answering questions, potentially, you could show up in that area, right? And even, even better, you might even show up in that, uh, what they call rich snippets, right? Remember, what does a chiropractor do? And boom, Health Direct showed up because they answered the question. They answered the actual question. So the typical questions that get asked are how, what, where, and then these are to a lesser extent. So you start writing content on your website and in blogs that start answering how, what, where, then because this is what people are searching for. And this is called search intent, okay? And I'm gonna just very quickly explain that. Gone are the days where we just type in one or two keywords in the search bar of, 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 of a search engine. Now we type in phrases, you know, how to straighten my back, how to remove tiles from a, a, from a thing. You know, uh, I have a lump on, on, the, on the side of my, my hip. What does that mean? It literally, we are typing in either phrases or sentences. And this is what the how, what, where strategy can really help to start triggering organically, even above, even above big brand names, because you have answered the question. And that is what it's all about. Just answer that question. Okay. And so if you look at like improving your, your local SEO, yeah, there's a ton of stuff that you can do. All right. Uh, and, 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 you know, there's a lot of technical stuff. Get your Google My Business listing. NAP is name, address, and phone number. And this is all about making sure that whatever listings you have online, so whether you're listed on Google My Business, whether you're listed on Truth Local, Hot Frog, Yellow Pages, Yelp, wherever you are, whatever your business is, make sure you have your business name 
the address and the phone number is consistent across every one of those platforms. And believe it or not, Google looks at that as a, a ranking factor, which a lot of people are like questioning, but feed the beast, all right? Just feed the beast. Uh, th that's what they look for. And then finally, honestly, look at your content. You, you write content, not just to please the search engine with keywords and key phrases and then what, but write it for the humans, right? So how do you write for the humans? Does my website solve people's problems? And I go back to my previous slide, answer the question. And if you're not sure what question uh, I need to answer, literally go onto Google and start typing your area of business into the search bar and Google will start pre-populating with what other people have asked for, right? These are other searches that are going on and you can see, oh, this is, you know, people are searching for these things. So maybe I should write a blog or update my content to include these search uh, questions. And then you can start bringing them in. But ultimately, it's not, it's, you know, it's not about being really smart and technical. It's about, hey, I have human beings coming to my website, and that's what they need to see. I'm going to answer that, that, that question. OK? Well, um, I know I'm getting close, but do we have question, any questions? Yes, we have three questions. One goes back to uh, the speed of uh a speed of website yeah. loading so how yeah. do you measure how quickly your website loads is yeah. a question from jane yep yep that, one of the, the the best ways to do it is to have um, an seo audit done on your website and that's a technical audit and um and and, the, and and there are some very specialized tools that measure the website speed and load that's probably the easiest way to answer that okay is that and do you have to pay somebody to do that for you or is there uh, a line you can do? Uh, look you, you probably you might you may be able to find i mean we, we do it it's a paid yep. service right? right but you you may be able to find online uh right. free website seo audits but okay you know you get what you pay for cool great uh margaret has asked does authority strength rely on the number of backlinks or who backlinks my website both both, both? Both. First of all, it's the it's the it's the the quality of the backlink. Yeah. Then there's the quantity of the backlinks. So if I have a hundred backlinks coming from dodgybrothers.com.au, it's going to be worth nothing. If I have one backlink that's coming from the Australian Financial Review, it's probably yep. worth a lot more. Fair enough. Okay. And the last one from Bernard: um, How do I get false malicious Google reviews removed? Yeah. Good. That's that. This is the perennial question. A lot of people. Google will not, unless it's a defamatory and absolutely that you can prove to them that that was a, an issue, uh, absolutely defamatory and and um, uh, uh, unjust. Google will not re uh, remove reviews. They, they they're saying that that's our platform for real and honest feedback. Now that's not to say that people get malicious, right? So my in that case, if Google are going to come to the party with you, my suggestion is a. You respond nicely, thank you, and 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 do what you can, and you know, and then you may part way, and then B, you bury that review with a lot of good reviews, and that's pretty much the strategy that a lot of yeah. people do. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, so that's 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 the th that's the three questions there. Okay. So back to you, Bob. Okay, so we did this. Okay, uh, the ups, the positives of uh, SEO. Yeah, there's no cost per click. It's very targeted. You know, um, it, organic traffic is consistent. You don't have to pay for it. And honestly, SEO means this is not just for Google. It's for Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Baidu, and whatever other search engine that's going to come up tomorrow, okay? But it is hard, okay? It takes a lot of effort. You've seen that. <clears throat> it's a long haul. It, it's, there's no immediate result. Long time to see any return on investment. It's very hard to make a re return on investment. It gets very technical. And Google, because it keeps changing its algorithms, what worked today may not work tomorrow. All right, so just just got to bear that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna hop, skip, and jump now. I need to probably do another area that you need to uh, maybe look at is something called schema. And a lot of people you may have heard about this. Schema does exactly what this this slide is showing. Right, there's a gazillion websites out there, and schema could help you stand out from those gazillions of websites. So schema is something that is a collaboration between the big search engines, right? And what it does, it essentially adds additional information to your listing when you show up on Google search that may encourage people to say, oh, I'm going to click through and, 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 and this, is, this is interesting. And I'll show you examples. So schema is not an SEO, necessarily an SEO 
organic ranking factor. It's, there's no evidence to show that if you have schema that you're going to rank higher. But what it does show is that if you have a schema installed on your website, it may encourage people to click through to your website. Why? Here's an example. If you're a recipe site, right? I've got uh, like, this is a chicken pot pie. I've got a five star rating out of 72 votes. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, it takes an hour and 15 minutes to make. This many calories in the thing. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'm going to click on that, okay? If you are, what is this, JB Hi-Fi or someone? Uh, yep, JB Hi-Fi, five-star rating. Uh, there's a return policy uh, and, you know, boom. Yep, I'm, I'm happy with that. If you're a, 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 like a, a political or, you're, you know, you're providing information and you're, you're quoting facts and statistics, uh, in this case, um, you know, it's like, well, he, the 27 million people are trapped in modern slavery. Is that true or not? In this case, uh, politic, uh, politi, politi fact have checked it and they said, yeah, it's mostly true. So you're more likely to click onto this website to find out more because it's not just ho bogus stuff. eBay, eBay is one of the best ones that do this. Right from the search page, without even going to their website, right from their search page, you can search eBay and you, or you can jump straight to uh, various areas on that page and you can, or you can search and it'll take you to where, where you want without even leaving, this, uh, having to click through to the, uh, to, the, um, <clears throat> to, the, to the URL. So that's what schema does. Schema can encourage people to click through, stay on and engage with your website, right? So this is something you might need to talk to your web developer if you, uh, if you have you've done that on how to install schema and it's, it's not, a, not a complicated thing. Okay, we're sort of getting through here. Everything that we've talked about right now is getting people to find you, right? SEO, search, uh, pay-per-click, schema, all that type of, is to get people to find you and to click through to your website. That's been the primary objective of everything that we've spoken to. Now we're talking about something called conversion rate optimization. Now somebody's landed on your website. They've actually come to your website. Now what do you want them to do? Okay, you want them to do something. So you want them to take a conversion. A conversion is any action by your visitor on your, on your website. And this could be anything. It could be sign up, watch the video, contact me, uh, get in, you know, phone me, uh, subscribe to my newsletter, or, what, or whatever it is. Okay? Now, conversions are broken down. And this is, yep, getting a little bit technical, but this is how we structure your, your business profile. We say, what's the macro conversion? Macro is the end result that you're wanting. If you're an e-commerce site, it's buy the product. If you're a services site, it's like fill out the contact form or call me. Or if you're, um, or you may uh, subscribe to my newsletter so I can uh, get your email. A micro step are all those little, little, little steps that lead up to that. <clears throat> so if you're an e-commerce website, the first micro step is that they go to the product page, right? And look at your product. And there might be a video there. The second micro step is that they've uh, watched the video. The third micro step is they've added your product to their cart okay and then the fourth micro step might they've gone to the checkout all right to check out but they may not have checked out but they've had four micro steps leading up to buy the product so it's important to understand that you know there are mi macro and micro steps on a website that that you need to go through then the ultimately conversion rate optimization just means organizing all of your elements on the web page to make sure that they go through the micro steps and then ultimately to the macro step, which is what's your end game? You know, what is it that you want, want them to achieve? And one of the best ways to think about this, we go back to old school marketing here. For those of you who do, who had done marketing before or, or know about marketing, there was the sales funnel, right? And this is still relevant today. And the sales funnel or the marketing funnel was always broken down into a, a awareness, interest, desire, and action, right? So awareness, interest, desire, and action. And these are steps. And, you know, I won't go through each of these because I know Will's going to share the slides with you that you go through as you go through each of these steps. But what happens is that when somebody lands on your website and they bounce off immediately or they, they um, let's say they looked at the product page, they looked at the video, they've added it to the cart, they've gone to the checkout, but they've abandoned the cart, right? So that's, that's leakage right at the, at the desire stage. It's like, well, hang on, why do they, why do they bail out? At, at such, a, such a late stage, they didn't go through the purchase. So this is on a website. Uh, it's called a, a leaking funnel on your website that people are just not engaging or taking the mac, micro or macro actions that you wanted them to take 
on the website. And obviously, this re results in, hang on, you know, people aren't contacting you. The, you know, they they added it to your cart, but nothing happened. There's no follow up. They they're, they're ghosting you, you know, and whatever the case may be. So where are the leakages happening on your website? Okay, number one at the top of the stage, right? And this is all the marketing stuff we talked about: SEO, SEM, schema, all that type of stuff. If people are landing on your website and they're bailing out, then are you? You need to ask yourself: Are you talking to the right people, right? Uh, have you? Is your website talking to your most valuable client? Have you actually profiled what your most valuable client looks like? What are their characteristics, their likes, dislikes, and are you talking to their pain points on your website? Now, if you're resonating with me, then I'm your right lead, right? And I'm interested. So, yep, I want to keep going. And then, now, are you nurturing me? Are you providing me with information? You know, are, you, are, are, there, are, there, are there a blog that I can read about? There's a video that I can watch. Is there some testimonials and case studies about what you've done earlier, right? So, are you keeping me moving down this sales funnel, all right? And if you are, then at the end, hopefully, I should buy from you. But that's not the end either, because a lot of people are happy with the purchase, right? And then they forget about their client. And that is all about referrals and repeat business. So you need to follow up with your clients. It doesn't matter if you're transactional or not, or relationship selling, follow up with your client. It can just be a thank you note. And one of the best ways to do it is just do a satisfaction survey, right? How satisfied were you with what we did for you, right? Scale of one to 10, that's called the net promoter score. And again, at uh, the interest of time, I won't go into that. But there are many opportunities to follow up in businesses. Time and time, and I've seen they they fall, they stop at this point, and there's no follow up, and they go, "Yep, you know what? I, I'm I'm not getting repeat business." I said, "Well, what have you done to follow up?" And there's nothing. So these are the areas on your website that you've got people leaking and visitors leaking, and it's not just quite happening for you. So if somebody says, well, all right, great, Bob, thank you for that. But what does this look like on a website? Okay. And this is what it may look like on a website, right? So number one, on the top of the page here is your, what we call the header one, H1 on, on your homepage. This is what Google looks at to understand what is your website about and how many websites have you seen that just say welcome or welcome to our website? Absolutely wasted shot. So if you're uh, uh, an electrician, you might want to put electrician servicing North Shore area, specializing domestic, commercial, and industrial. So now Google says, ah, you're an electrician, you're servicing the North Shore or upper North Shore area or whatever it is, and you do commercial, domestic, and electric, uh, and, uh, uh, industrial. Google knows what you're doing, so it indexes that. Then you might have an equally compelling and a descriptive secondary heading. Um, you know, then you might have some uh, your call to actions over here, right? You want them to take action, like call us now, click here to contact us. So if they've read about your, your how good you are, and if I go back to Margaret, this is where you would put your, to make sure that you've incorporated your, uh, your, your, your long tail keywords and phrases and what people are searching for, and, and you're addressing the pain points of your client or your customer, and you've done that here, you give them an opportunity at that point to say, yeah, I'm interested, click here to contact me, boom, click here. Sometimes they want a little bit more um, uh, convincing, right? In this case, a testimonial would be a good thing to have. Okay, so people will say, well, testimonial, you can say what you want on a testimonial. And I'll say, yeah, that's true. But here's the thing about testimonials. Psychologically, uh, people are looking for a reason to buy from you. And please believe me when I say that, they're looking for a reason to buy from you. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on your site. So give them a reason. Give them some good testimonials. There might be more information. If you can include an image or a video, fantastic. But this is, this is what a sales funnel looks like. This is what a sales funnel, you're taking them through. Yep, I know what you do. Ah, yeah, this is me. I'm giving you an opportunity to contact me. Oh, I trust you because you've had some good reviews. Oh, there's some more information. Yep, I'm going to contact you. Click, and they come through to you. So that's how um, a sales funnel process is built into a website. Okay, and again, you'll have a copy of these slides. You can read uh, this in more detail in terms of what you need to do, what we call top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel, and some of the actions that you can then take and how you can keep people moving down that sales funnel and hopefully take that uh, macro action that you want them to take. Right, last slide. Um, social media. Somebody mentioned uh, social media before, and can we, yep, you know what? This is another area in itself, all right? 
And first biggest mistake I, I see people make is that when, when they want to get a website done. And it's like, yeah, look, I want to link to my Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube channels. I go, are you sure? They go, yeah, yeah, I've got all those channels. And I look at their content and it is super thin. So if you cannot maintain content on a regular basis across all your social channels, then you need to figure out what I'm going to, which one I'm going to choose and where I'm going to stay. And the simplest rule of thumb that I can give to you is where does your audience live? Where does your target audience live? Is it on Pinterest? Is it on YouTube? Is it on Twitter? Is it on Facebook? Right? And you say, well, you know what? They're actually on LinkedIn. I'm a professional services. Or you know what? I'm, 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 a, I'm a photographer. Right? And I think a lot of them live on Pinterest. Great. Then let's, let's pick Pinterest. Then you nurture and grow those uh, social profiles as opposed to being on every profile because you feel that's the thing to do. So social media, <clears throat> what social media is not, this is not the end game, all right? Just because you got a Facebook page or a Pinterest or a LinkedIn page, doesn't mean that you don't need to do anything else. These are avenues or vehicles to drive people back to your website. You don't own these properties. Facebook does, Pinterest does, Google does, oh, uh, Blogger. Y you own your website. So it's a bit like renting a house versus owning a house. If I rent a house, I cannot knock down a wall, you know, willy-nilly. If I own my house, I can knock down any wall that I want, paint any wall that I want. You know, on your website, you can do what you want. The idea is to drive people from the social channels to your website. It isn't the ultimate sales platform. And I've seen a lot of services business try to grow their business on, uh, through social. And it's been a woeful failure, right? That's not to say that it doesn't work for some other businesses. Um, and it's not the only way to reach your customers, right? Blogging, uh, uh, EDMs, like uh, database marketing, email marketing, they're all very legitimate and powerful ways to reach your customer. What it is, it's great for brand awareness, all right? So this is how you can continue to grow your brand with some good information, in, uh, um, educative uh, education information, it's a great way to stay connected with your clients and your customers and your prospects because they're on there. So why not? Why not be seen to be seen active? And finally, it's a great way to educate and entertain. And you know what? At some step, even provoke. I'm, I don't mean that in a negative way, but there's nothing wrong with you taking an, a view that is counter to the mainstream. Just say, but guys, what if? Da, 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 da. And the, you will at least start a discussion. That's not to say you be controversial or go against the grain, but you can. It doesn't mean you just got to just, you know, follow the herd and just, just do what everyone does. So that's really is my, because like I said, this is another area altogether. Um, so I think probably it's about time that uh, we, we wrap up and say that is the world of digital marketing. Thank you very much. Uh, very, a lot of information there. So yeah, we'll be stay, we'll be sharing these slides uh, today, and I've also recorded this session, so um, you can then go back through this at a time that's convenient to you. I uh, got a couple of questions for mm -hmm. you, Bob. Um, uh, G is asking how much you charge for SEO. So perhaps G, you could contact yeah. um, contact um, Bob directly. Yeah. I'll share yeah. his contact details after the session. Um, Robert asks, how should we allocate our marketing budget between SEO, Google Ads, social media marketing, email marketing, et cetera? Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's a really good question. A really good question. So, so if you wanted to go on a return on investment um, a perspective, um, uh, honestly, number one, email marketing would be, and, and as much as people say, oh, that's crap, email doesn't work because I, I receive emails and I just delete them and I unsubscribe. Very quickly, what you need to do is put the time and effort into your email marketing. What that means is you've got your database of your clients. You need to segment those clients. Remember I, one slide I said, who's your target audience and what do they look like? Segment your clients in your email, in your email list, whatever, those, whatever that segmentation is. Then you write content in email for that particular segment. That means you can't just write a generic email and do a batch and blast because you'll, you'll lose me. So email marketing, number one, is has probably the highest return on investment, right? Number two is probably ads, Google ads, and then you've got everything else that comes in after that. Right, thanks. Uh, another question um, from Carl uh, in the chat box. Can we find <laughs> keywords that our competitors are using? Yes, yes. So, 
So if you, if you do if you wanted to do an SEO audit with with me, one of the things I provide you is I say, okay, pick a competitor that you feel is your benchmark competitor. And here comes the sell, the sell job. Pick your benchmark competitor, and then we'll go and do an SEO audit and analysis, and we'll show you what pages on their website are driving the highest traffic, what content is driving the highest traffic, and what keywords they're using that's driving traffic for them. Great. So uh, sometimes uh, looking at what else, what others are doing and stealing their ideas isn't necessarily a bad thing. Steve, I say steal shame. Borrowing. <laughs> yep. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, any more, just any more questions, anyone, before Bob goes? Um, uh, I've had many, th a number of questions, a number of thanks. So, yes, obviously, this has gone over very well, Bob. So, thank you. Right, right. So, any last questions? Please just put them in the Q&A box. Um, we are running a half day session with Bob in July, um, but we are fully subscribed. So if you're lucky enough to have been uh, uh, have, have, uh, signed up early enough, well, then we'll be seeing Bob again on the 15th of July, COVID willing. Um, but yes, please, please keep an eye out for other events that will be running um, again. Social media is a big one. Social media marketing is a big one. All of this is something which the business community has been telling me for the last five years is always useful. So um, we'll be running more. Keep an eye out for it. And um, yes, Bob, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for, for, thank you for, for having me yeah. for it today. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you all very soon. And um, yeah, we'll stay in touch. So I'll be sending the, the recording and the slides around and Bob's contact details. So thanks very much. Have a lovely day. And let's hope COVID doesn't get any worse. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a great one.